Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the staff in the room, if you have a question, if you'd like a form filled out, please raise your hand and uh, they'll bring over a question in. Jeff? Thank you very much, Councillor, and uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, all of you, uh, respected councillors, for extending this invitation to us to TPA this evening to be here. This is important to us, and we're very pleased to take part in this evening. Um, I'd like to introduce to you on my right is Jean Cabral, who is the Executive Vice President of the Toronto Port Authority, and specifically the gentleman responsible for heading up and operating the Billy Bishop Toronto City Airport. So in the next five to ten minutes, I'm going to use this presentation to discuss the TPA's role in the report proposal. I'm going to discuss our activities in supporting the city staff report that was referred to earlier, and the conditions under which the TPA would support the Porter Plan. Firstly, though, I'd like to again uh, extend my thanks and commend the team of Deputy City Manager John Levy, uh, the Waterfront Secretariat, uh, this evening led by David Stonehouse and his fine team, and the very good work that they've done. This is not uh, an easy file, this is complicated subject matter, and I can frankly tell you they've done an extraordinary job in preparing their review and assessment. So I I'm grateful to them and I thank them. I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes just um, reviewing the airport and its role in the city. After my presentation, my, my attention is going to be to hear your comments and your concerns and to answer the questions. Uh, so, starting with a little bit about the TPA and how we work with the City of Toronto. The TPA works in partnership with the City of Toronto. We are the owners and operators of the Port of Toronto and, of course, Billy Bishop Toronto City Airport. We're committed to building and managing first-class infrastructure. I should point out that we are near, neither funded by nor backstopped by the federal government, but we're mandated to be fully and financially self-sufficient. Torontonians uh, seem to like what we're doing. As you can see, what they're saying is that 90% of Torontonians polled by Ipsos Reid are saying that the airport is an important asset for the city. That's an extraordinary thing. We also think that the airport is, is an important new gateway for the city. And to the extent that it is recognized as such, as a proud Torontonian, I'm sure you would share this with me, we are going to make it the very best that it can be. And when people come to this city to experience the Pan Am Games, an extraordinary event, they're going to say that, they're going to feel that about Toronto, and they're going to see that with our airport. This means, in terms of how we manage the airport, that we are going to continue our policy of a managed growth policy for the airport. And that's about striking the right balance between service and community priorities, and a commitment to work with the city to manage that growth. The airport, frankly, uh, as we've said before, must not overwhelm the very delicate balance of mixed use that has been mandated for the city's waterfront. We understand that, and we are committed to that. The airport must be a good neighbor. And in good faith, not just to the community immediately across the channel, but also to communities far and wide within its reach, and I am including the community within which we are speaking, obviously, this evening. And as the airport has gained in popularity, the residential area nearby has also exploded with growth. The airport needs to be better understood. We are not a Mini Pearson, nor do we aspire to be a Mini Pearson, nor do we need one. This is an image of the planned arrival and departure routes for commercial flights associated with Billy Bishop Toronto City Airport. The yellow square is obviously the Scarborough area. Apologize for councillors that are an awkward angle. Uh, flight activity coming from our airport is directed 90% over water. I'll just repeat that. Flight activity to and from Billy Bishop Toronto City Airport is directed 90% over water. Those 10% of flights that actually do fly over Scarborough are those departures that are heading to northern destinations like Sudbury and Thunder Bay. And these flights account for approximately 17 planned departures each day and reflect a path that goes east before heading north. Importantly, 
we understand these flights would normally have an altitude of between 4,000 and 7,000 feet and are directed to fly at no less than 3,000 feet. Compare this, if you will, with Pearson's airport flight paths. The Yellow Square is again the Scarborough area. Pearson has many flight paths that fly directly over Scarborough, and this activity is often, frankly, mistaken for the activity that comes from or is related to Billy Bishop Toronto City Airport, or indeed could be related to other private or, or uh, non-commercial aircraft that are coming into the general Toronto area to take in sightseeing or passing through and are not related to either Pearson or Billy Bishop Toronto City Airport. Statistically speaking, I understand that the figures have traditionally averaged between 18,000 and 19,000 flights annually that come through Toronto that follow VFR, visual flight rules, along the coastline of the city and come to see Toronto on a sightseeing or tourism basis. They neither stop at our airport, nor do they originate from our airport, nor are they destined for our airport, but they are in the airspace. This slide contrasts the two airports. The yellow areas are the Billy Bishop activity, and the red and blue lines, as you can see, are associated with Pearson. So making our airport better means constant investment, not just on the air side, but also on the ground side. Top airlines like Germany's Lufthansa and airports worldwide are recognizing the importance of efficient ground side access for their passengers' satisfaction and for their ability to be good neighbors with stakeholders. The ground game is a strategic game. It's important to the airport, it's important to the airlines who offer service from the airport, and most certainly, it's important for the local and for the extended communities. Infrastructure to access airports is an important consideration for municipalities across North America. As this is on municipal lands, cities normally provide for this. We understand funding is tight for all municipalities, and Toronto is no different, and Toronto has many competing priorities. That's why we recently made a request to the federal and provincial governments to assist and address Toronto's nearby congestion with much needed infrastructure improvements for the benefit of all stakeholders in our community, for the benefit of all stakeholders. The TPA is heavily engaged with city staff to answer outstanding questions from their November 2013 staff report to Council. We have funded these initiatives to date and we are providing expertise reports and analysis wherever possible. The requirements for the Porter Plan to go forward are significant. And I would like to read these for you, but I can't quite see the, the board. Thank you. So first and foremost, for those who may have difficulty reading from the back, planes must meet the existing strict noise guidelines under the tripartite agreement and receive the ICAO, ICAO certification. Secondly, that the TPA prepare an updated airport master plan to include a lifting of the jet ban scenario. A significant financial investment made by the TPA in runway and other air, air side infrastructure must be made. An appropriate public environmental assessment process will be held, which will include stakeholders' input. Agreement from each of the Toronto City Council, the federal government, and the TPA as signatories to the tripartite agreement must be done. The TPA has also offered recently to institute interim caps for passengers during peak hours and until such time as infrastructure improvements can be made to alleviate traffic congestion and improve access to the airport. This offer is consistent with our adopted managed growth approach and is an important concession that the TPA is willing to make to ensure that the airport continues to fit within the mixed-use waterfront that we spoke of earlier. Now, some changes will be required to amend the existing tripartite agreement. First of all, 
the NEF oh, will not be required. But this is what does not change, ladies and gentlemen. The NEF 25, the most restrictive noise exposure forecast contour in North America, will not change, nor is it being asked to change. The existing curfew from 11 p.m. to 6.45 a.m. existing in the tripartite agreement is not being asked to change, nor will it change. And Medivac, a non-commercial flight activity that currently enjoys access to the airport, will continue. The Porter Plan is being currently assessed by each of the tripartite as signatories. These are, meanwhile, the TPA's own very strict conditions under which we are evaluating the proposal using our own do-no-harm criteria. Firstly, that the strict 1983 noise restrictions will continue, that there will be efficient use of slot utilization and not necessarily more flights, that there will be no negative impact on the environment. Thank you that we'll provide that the surrounding area will be no less livable than any other multi-purpose Toronto neighborhood. <laughs> that we'll improve traffic, vehicle traffic flows and increase the use of transit and shuttle service and work with Canada Malting Site Redevelopment. We will be aircraft agnostic as long as each can meet the strict standards of the existing tripartite agreement. We will preserve access for the boating community with no meaningful navigational impact. We will preserve private aviation access for small aircraft. A business case to support the TPA's investment will be made, and this includes consideration given to the long-term financing and tripartite agreement extensions if necessary. And Toronto's economy will grow and benefit the Porter Plan should improve upon the existing positive economic impact the airport is already having on the region. Toronto City Council and the federal government obviously will also have to offer their approval. I'd like to thank you for your attention. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have in the period that follows.